Cowboys 14 H. Vernon Bryant, staff photographer Dallas Cowboys defensive end Demarcus Lawrence 90, celebrates after sacking Atlanta Falcons quarterback Matt Ryan 2, during the first half of play at Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta on Sunday, November 18, 2018. Vernon Bryant, the Dallas Morning News by John Owning at John Owning The only things preventing Demarcus Lawrence from entering free agency, where the fifth-year defensive end is free to go elsewhere, are the franchise tag, which would pay him over $20 million in 2019, or a massive contract extension that would make Lawrence one of the highest-paid defensive ends in the league. With the value of quarterbacks skyrocketing in the NFL, the value of the players tasked with pressuring the signal callers has appreciated at an astronomical rate as well. In 2010, there were only four defensive ends who had a salary cap figure over $8.5 million, per Spatrack. In 2018, there were 20 defensive ends who accounted for over $8.5 million of their team's salary cap. Part of that is due to the continually rising NFL salary cap but it's also indicative of a greater emphasis on players who can affect the quarterback most. It's also the same reason why the highest paid offensive position outside of quarterback is left tackle, the position tasked with normally protecting the quarterback's blind side, first per track. Lawrence made $17 million on the franchise tag in 2018. That number that will likely be the starting point in any negotiations between Lawrence's representatives and the Cowboys' front office. Shelling out that kind of money is never easy, especially in a sport with a salary cap but there's no question that Lawrence deserves it. With that in mind, let's examine why the Cowboys should do everything in their power to retain the former All-Pro defensive end. A tough leader entering his prime One of the biggest reasons why Dallas should be fine with giving Lawrence a massive contract is that the 26-year-old defensive end is still an ascending talent who has yet to reach his physical prime, where physical development and experience properly dovetail with technical acuity. Lawrence's best football is likely ahead of him, which should entice Cowboys fans considering Lawrence has recorded back-to-back double-digit sack seasons. Sure, Lawrence has dealt with his fair share of injuries thus far in his career, which makes some apprehensive about paying Lawrence exorbitant money. However, he has also proven capable of playing through injuries where most players would sit. Fans often worry about players becoming lackadaisical after receiving a massive contract, as the now financially secure players lack the motivation to work at and improve their craft. Former Washington defensive tackle Albert Hainsworth is a great example of this. He was one of the best defensive tackles in football before receiving a seven-year, $100 million contract from Washington in 2009. He rewarded Washington with just 13 tackles and 2.5 sacks in 2010 and was promptly traded to New England in July of 2011 before being waived in November of the same year. Though, it's impossible to know how an individual will react after becoming financially secure, all signs point to Lawrence avoiding the pitfalls of Hainsworth and other high-priced busts. Lawrence has become one of the leaders on defense and his effort level rarely wanes from snap to snap. His motor is consistently running hot, which sets a great example for the rest of the defensive line. Equally effective against run and pass Lawrence is the unique type of defensive end who can be equally effective against the run and pass. Since 2017, Lawrence is 6th in the NFL in sacks, 25, ahead of star pass rushers such as Von Miller, 24.5, Khalil Mack, 23, Frank Clark, 22, and Yannick Ngakwe, 21.5. He's also 8th in quarterback hits 49, per pro football reference. In that same time span, Lawrence is ninth in tackles for loss, 41. In 2018, Lawrence finished fourth in run stops, 28, and second in run stop percentage among edge defenders with at least 200 snaps against the run. He beat out Pro Bowl talents such as Mac Miller, Chandler Jones, and Cameron Jordan in both categories. The term well rounded is typically used for middling players who find adequate success against the run and pass. 
However, Lawrence is the unique talent who is an elite pass rusher and run defender, making him one of the only truly well-rounded defensive ends in the NFL. Since we are going to discuss why Lawrence is such an effective pass rusher a little bit later, let's take this time to focus on his ability to defend the run. Typically, defensive ends fall into a couple major categories in terms of run defense. On one end, there are the defensive ends who specialize at penetrating into the backfield to disrupt plays in the backfield. These players are typically smaller and struggle to hold their ground at the point of attack, which is why they rely on penetration to find success as a run defender. On the other end, there are defensive ends who specialize at holding their ground at the point of attack, which allows them to set a strong edge while occupying their gap. These are typically the bigger and stronger defensive ends who are better at stacking and shedding blocks rather than penetrating into the backfield with quickness. Lawrence is one of a handful of defensive ends who can do both at a high level, others include Trey Flowers, Cameron Jordan and JJ. What? Lawrence possesses the strength based and hand technique to consistently stymie, or even displace, blockers at the point of attack before shedding to pursue the ball carrier, and he possesses the quickness to knee into the backfield to make splash plays against the run. On top of that, Lawrence may be the best backside run defender in the entire NFL. He's definitely the best backside run defender the Cowboys have had since DeMarcus Ware. Being a backside edge defender is tricky, especially when unblocked, because he must be mindful of zone reads and a plethora of play-action passes. Nevertheless, Lawrence does an excellent job of reading his keys to defend the potential misdirection before pursuing the ball carrier down the line of scrimmage. Lawrence was so effective as a backside run defender that teams were forced to allocate a blocker, typically a tight end, toward him on plays where they would typically leave the backside edge defender unblocked. Unfortunately for opposing teams, Lawrence still found ways to make his presence felt, as he would often displace or defeat blockers to the point where he was still able to make stops as the backside edge defender. Master of Disguise The key to Lawrence's success as pass rusher is not the fact that he has a wide array of moves at his disposal, it's that he can interlay each pass rush move with an assortment of footwork setups and counters. That makes it difficult for blockers to discern how Lawrence is going to attack them on any given rep. Let's use Lawrence's premier pass rush move, the cross chop, as an example. The main reason Lawrence is able to continuously succeed with the cross chop move is that he can use it in a variety of ways. He can use a speed cross chop, where he sets it up by immediately attacking vertically, one of Law's best rushes of the year was negated by an iffy at best flag. Speed cross chop to clear contact as he burns around the edge. Not sure I've seen DLAW turn a tighter corner this season. Pick.twitter.com slash alfurpgalo 3L, John Owning, at John Owning, in November 30, 2018 Lawrence can also use a stutter step to set up the outside cross chop, where the stutter step draws out the blocker's hands, enabling Lawrence to use his favorite pass rush move, the Marcus Lawrence has better timing. Bob's inside before expanding outside with his well-timed and placed cross chop with his inside hand. Hands are always in sync with his feet. Gorgeous inside cross chop to beat Morgan Moses' punch and apply pressure. Pick.twitter.com slash 8xbabu9kiz, John Owning, at John Owning, in November 23, 2018 On top of being able to set up the cross chop in a variety of ways, Lawrence can also sequence from a cross chop into another pass rush move without hesitation, keeping blockers off balance and unable to sustain after the initial counter. One of the best examples of this is Lawrence sequencing into a rip move to clear a blocker's hands after his initial cross chop. Even when a blocker adequately counters Lawrence's cross chop, he's still in danger, as Lawrence's active hands can seamlessly employ an effective counter. Here, Lawrence transitions into a two-hand swipe off a failed cross chop move. The Marcus Lawrence shows off his ability to sequence moves together on this sack. Initially looks to hit his cross chop with whiffs. So he immediately transitions into his next move, a two-hand swipe, as he speeds around the corner. Sublime. 